Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And uh, today we have a mail day. So we've got two of these. And there was also a, uh, a pickup because I went to a tournament not too long ago to stream. That was the Dwarven War Warriors Cup. Maybe you've seen it live on, on YouTube. If not, I'm going to make movies out of it. So stay tuned. But anyway, um, there was also a really uh, nice, nice trader there. Also a player. His name is Wijnald Schoenmakers. And um, I believe you can find if, if you do trades on card market, he's there on card market. He's a very reliable seller. Um, and the cool thing is he actually gave me a nice playset of Apprentice Wizards and it's not just um, your basic Apprentice Wizards, they're different. So it's gonna show you here. Really cool. And I really like these colors. And he just gave them to me. So that's really cool. So thank you for that. And the card that I actually bought from him that is this card. It's a card that um, I, I already have one copy of this and I feel with two copies I can really use it in a deck. And it is the Transmute Artifact. So this is a card from the Antiquities expansion. Two blue to cast, it's a sorcery. And there's a lot of text. Uh, you know what, I'm, I'm just gonna read it to you. It says, search through your library for one artifact and immediately place it into play. Also choose any artifact in play that you control and place it in its owner's graveyard. If the new artifact has a casting cost greater than that of the discarded one, you must pay the difference or transmute artifact fails and both artifacts are discarded. Shuffle your library after playing this card. So it's also a shuffle effect, which could be nice, but it's basically a tutor for artifacts. So for example, if you can combine this with mana vault, you tap the mana vault for mana, then you play the transmute artifact and you say, you know what? I'm gonna sack the mana vault because it's gonna start dealing damage to me anyway, and you can find another artifact. But just in general, it's a really strong, powerful card because imagine this is a tutor for Chaos Orb. Chaos Orb can get rid of any card in old school, you know? Um, so yeah, this transmit artifact, extremely powerful. So I'm really happy with this. I now have two of these. Um, so this was, this this is just some of, some of my pickups from the tournament. I just wanted to share this here in this mail day. Um, but we also have two envelopes. And these envelopes are both from Belgium. And uh, I can show you here, Belgium. You know in Belgium, for people that don't know, Belgium is right underneath the Netherlands, it's quite close. So when we have old school events, I usually see these two Belgian players. Um, this is from, the white envelope is from Peter. And Peter is also the organizer of the Gaius Adventure Old School Assembly. It's like an annual uh, old school event held in Hasselt in Belgium. Uh, which is really, it's a really cool event. Unfortunately, this year, due to all the circumstances, it had to be canceled, but really looking forward uh, to coming to visit that event, hopefully next year. And then this one is from Simon, and Simon is also a regular uh, player that I see at old school tournaments. Very good player, uh, always plays with very competitive decks, and uh, yeah, just, just an overall good player, but also they, they sell some cards every once in a while. I'm just gonna start here with the, uh, the post from, uh, from Peter because I know what's in here, or at least what I expect to be in here. And uh, it is, this is my second copy of the card. And it's one of those cards that I, I don't play with it yet, but I just pick it up when it comes along. When somebody offers it, I go like, okay, um, if it's still available, I'll take it. And just to keep it a little secretive here. Ooh, okay, are we ready? Because I guess it's stuck on the paper. There we go. Okay. It's, <laughs> There's another card in front of it. I, I guess that's a good thing. So well packed, Mr. Bather. I don't want to say your surname here on the channel. Really nice guy, by the way. Really, really nice player. Uh, here we go. So we already see it's a black card by Douglas Schuler. There is a lot of text. I mean, probably people are already recognizing the card right now. Let me know in the comments below if you already know what card it is. Actually, ooh, it already said it, didn't it? Anyway, there is a lot of text on here. This is, of course, the Oubliette. And the nice thing is this is the one with the clear number on it. You can see it. And my other co copy had, has the dark number on it. Let me actually take a look. I've got my binder right here. Uh, let me take a look. Where is that other Oubliette? And I can show you the difference. So this is 
the difference. Now, um, here you can clearly see this is a dark number. It's actually quite hard to see, but it's two black and one to cast, and of course, the other version. So you've got two versions. I believe one is slightly more valuable than the other. I believe it's the dark version, but I'm not quite sure. But look at the amount of text down here. Wow. Let's just let's just read it, shall we? So two black and one to cast for an enchantment from the Arabian Nights expansion, and it reads: Select a creature in play when Oubliette is cast. That creature is considered out of play as long as Oubliette is in play. Hence, the creature cannot be the target of spells and cannot receive damage. Use special powers, attack or defend. All uh, counters and enchantments on the creature remain, but are also out of play. If Oubliette is removed, creature creatures uh, sorry uh, creature returns to play tapped. So that's quite important that it returns to play tapped. Um, an interesting thing here about this card is it saw a recent reprint, and that completely changed uh, the way that people look at this card because now this whole text. I mean. <sighs> This is what I love about old school, like these complete, like it's like reading a novel on a magic card, but obviously in a new type of magic, um, you know, players want more clarity. Um, and I guess I guess it's a good thing, you know, because it also helps us to to keep the game, um, you know, playable. So let's take, let's take a look, because it's reprinted in a set. And what I understand, it was played quite a lot by, by popper players. So that's a format where you can only play with commons. And the new Oracle text actually says, when Oubliette enters the battlefield, target creature faces out until Oubliette leaves the battlefield. Tap that creature as it faces in this way. And the cool thing about this, what I've been told, because um, I don't play these formats, what I've been told what's so cool about this new Oubliette, and I'll probably just have a picture on right, right here in this section, and I'll leave the original Oubliette over here. Um, what's, what's so cool about uh, this new rule set for, for people that uh, is because in commander, that's what I'm trying to say, in commander you can play it and you can face out the commander of your opponent. Now remember, in commander, when for example you play a sword of plowsters on a commander, your opponent can say, okay, I'm just going to put it back into the command zone. But with Oubliette, you can't. With Oubliette, I mean, this is the perfect prison for commanders. So I, I thought, I, I think that's kind of funny, like such an old card all of a sudden being so important in, in the new meta uh, of today. Okay, so this is Oubliette, Peter. Thank you very much. It's gonna go next to my other Oubliette, and as soon as I have enough of those, I, I'm gonna play them, because I love playing these cards. They're usually in and out of my binders all the time when I brew new decks. So let's take a look. We also have this, a letter from Mr. Simon from Belgium. So we're gonna open it up and uh, Ripity rip rip, Simon, really nice guy, and um, I think I think Simon, I think I've never won a match against you. That's not that special because I, I don't win that often. But uh, I remember, I think we played once or twice at a tournament, and I think you beat me with robots, like the the Leo style robots. Let me get scissors here to open it up. And Go here on the side, go here on the side, boom, boom, boom. Let's take a look. And there we, ooh, I already see a beautiful card here. And this is really cool, look at this. This is a beta stream of life. Now, we just talked about Oubliette and that Oubliette has a completely different wording. Now the rules text has completely changed. Now stream of life, is a very unique card because the text on Stream of Life, target player against X Life, has never been changed. And this card has been reprinted tons of times. So that is quite unique about this card. I mean, can you imagine making a card so long ago and, and just the rules text on it is still accurate? In a way, it's one of the most perfect cards in Magic if you look at it from a rules perspective. So I'm just gonna, a little bit off camera here to get the sellotape off. Oh. There goes, there goes the phone. Because I don't want to show you the card on the other side. I want to kind of keep that a secret here. So here we go. We're gonna take them out. Look at that. There are actually two of them. Now I'm gonna use these. Actually, I'm gonna use one of them, but I guess I have to play them both. Oh, look at that art. Let's just for a moment look at that art. And I have to say the beta, the colors, the 
black border. It's it's really beautiful. That big tech start player against X Live. That's what it is. Mark Poole. Beautiful art, and let's look at the other copy. They're both in a pretty good, pretty good shape, actually. And um, the reason that I wanted actually one copy, but obviously it's great to have two copies, um, is that I'm playing, we just talked about Commander a little bit, and I'm actually playing, uh, building an old school 100 card Commander deck. I've already played with it once. There's probably, you know what, I'll just show you. There's a little deck picture probably popping up right now. And um, I'm playing with a card, my commander is the Falconer, that's a 4-4, you can tap for two mana. And so I kind of build my whole deck around, well, not my whole deck, but a theme in the deck is X spells, just because it can generate a lot of mana. And obviously, Stream of Life is great, because if you play with cards like Hurricane and Earthquake, it's also really useful to have an X life spell to kind of give you that life and that space to cast those spells again. So really, 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 really nice cards. Thank you very much, Simon. Look at those beautiful beta stream of lives. Insane. Really beautiful. Okay, so these are the stream of lives. Now the card actually that I um, that I contacted uh, Simon about, and that was in his binder. And some of you know that I'm kind of, I'm a fan of also of foreign cards. I think foreign cards, foreign black bordered old school cards, they have something special. And I like to create what I call holiday decks. So I enjoy playing with cards, for example, that are all Italian and then I pretend that I'm going on holiday to Italy uh, or, or, or cards that are all Spanish. I, I know it's kind of goofy, but I, I like to do that. So I got this card and it's in really nice condition. And it's a red card, and it's 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 such a cool old school card. I'm just gonna flip it here, and it is Falling Star. So Falling Star is uh, you know one red and two to cast, and uh, and it's a sorcery, and it's just it's an amazing card. It's from Legends, so this is from Legends, and of course it's Italian here. Stregioneria, Stregioneria, Stella Cadente. Of course, Stella Cadente. And, and what it does actually, it says flip Falling Star onto a playing area from a height of at least one foot. Falling Star deals three damage to each creature it lands on. Tap all creatures dealt damage by Falling Star. If Falling Star doesn't turn completely over at least once during the flip, it has no effect. So it's pretty cool. Let me just, uh, there's a little uh, whoop, ventilator on here because it's so warm to this. I'm just gonna, here you can see it here in the corner. It's gonna turn it off because I wanna show you here this, the way this flips. So let me just get all the protocol sorcerers because what you're allowed to do actually is you're allowed to put the cards, there's been like an errata on it. I mean, don't you just love old school when people are actually playing with these cards? So imagine these are all creatures. So the stream of lives are also creatures, right? So I can I can put it here. Wow, it's, it's a big mess here. So I can put it like so. And now I've got, let me just take the phone with me. It's a little bit risky here. Oh, so now I've got my targets and I can flip it from the top. Whoop. And that means that now, one, two, three, four, actually five targets are going to get three damage. So, and remember everything that gets damaged also gets tapped. So this could be actually like really, really cool. So I'm really looking forward to play with this card and you know, maybe this card could go in my commander, but just in general, it's a great card to have. I mean, look at it. So incredibly stunning. And really, I mean, for me together with Chaos Orb, these are the cards that really make old school for me. These kind of goofy, goofy cards. They're, they're actually, there are much more. Mirror, Mirror Universe is one of them as well. There are tons and tons and tons. And every time you play old school, you discover more and, 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 and new cards and just fantastic. So Simon, thank you very much for, for selling this to me and also for the beautiful stream of lives. Um, and of course, thank you for watching another video of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you like what you see, you can support the channel. I'm just, just, just put the van on here. Look, check it out. It's fantastic. Um, if you want to support the channel, you can do so by becoming uh, a subscriber if you're not subscribed yet and you can also join with the channel membership so if, if, if that's something for you you can check it out if you want to uh, also leave a comment leave a like 
share this on your socials, all that helps. So thank you very much for that. And I also have a Patreon page. So there's probably, probably a card popping up right now. You can join uh, the Patreon to support Timmy Talks and to help me continue making this content. And at the moment, we, I have, I believe, 55 patrons. So it's going really well. But the more patrons I have, the more content I can make. So thank you all for your support. Talking about the patrons, let's go to the fantastic, wonderful, amazing end scroll where we can see all the patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomaar gezien.